Hey everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be taking an in-depth look at the brand new Galaxy S23 Ultra. Do you know what the best thing about this phone is? The new Galaxy S23 Ultra and its little brothers it's not the upgraded camera, the better selfie, or the slight better battery life. It is the fact that this uses a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 everywhere. Here in the UK and in Europe and other places. We've always had Samsung's Exynos chips, which have been fine, we've always felt a little shot changed. I'm happy to report everywhere we get Snapdragon with the Gen 2. So this is the S23 Ultra isn't any good. Is it worth upgrading to? Well, it all depends on what phone you're using right now and whether you have a cool one, £250 laying about or whatever frightening monthly payments this will go for. But if you are doing upgrade, you're probably not going to be disappointed. The S23 Ultra not only packs in the new 8 Gen 2 chip, but we also get a new 200 megapixel main camera with a new sensor and the promise of much improved low light photos and video. The selfie has been upgraded as well, although actually it's gone down in megapixels, but it should actually be a step up. And in fact, all three S23 phones share the exact same 12 megapixel selfie camera, and they all benefit from the smarter processing we get with the new chip. The design has been slightly tweaked, although you'd be hard-pressed to notice. One little change is that the curved edge on the screen is now less curved, or at least the curve doesn't start until closer to the edge, which I think is a smart design because you get a little bit more usable space before you fall off the edge, so to speak. Which is particularly helpful if you're drawing with the spun. Also, it might just be me, but it feels even more boxy. I mean, the Ultra is just the new note in all but name with the squared off corners, the spin the best specs, and some people love this design, but it is big, especially if you put a case on it. And depending on how you hold it, I find the corners can jab into my hand a little bit. I prefer the rounded edges of the regular S23, and the plus the S23s also use grill glass victors too on the front and back promising better long-term durability and also using more sustainable materials. And of course, no new phone launch would be complete without a couple of new colors. So, design-wise, not much has changed really, to the point where this is actually the old one. Same S Pen stereo speakers, same dual SIM, although no micro SD card support. It's all very familiar and it may be a little bit controversial, but I think if Apple get a bunch of flack for not really changing the design significantly, I feel like Samsung should maybe get that as well. Although the Ultra's smaller brothers, the regular S23 and the Plus, have had a bigger design revamp, dropping the camera module, leaving just the lenses like the Ultra. So there's definitely more design continuity now between the three. The screen hasn't really changed either, or at least not as far as you'd be able to tell. It's still rocking the big and still very lovely 6.8 inch quad HD 120Hz AMOLED with the same and still impressive 1750 nit peak brightness, which is great, but it doesn't quite match the 2000 nits you can get on the iPhone 14 Pro series. However, as someone who uses the Pro and Pro Max regularly, I can tell you that 2000 nits only lasts for like 10 seconds before it overheats and starts getting dimmer. So in practice there really isn't going to be that much between them. The only changes this year is the use of LTP3 tech, so the dynamic 1 to 120Hz refresh is a little bit quicker and more efficient, saving a bit of battery. And I'm also told the actual material of the screen is also more energy efficient as well. I am a little bit disappointed that we still don't get any Dolby Vision HDR support on the US 23S. Some rival phones are offering it, although I can't really talk about that just yet. Fair enough, it's a Samsung device and like their TVs, which also don't support W Vision, it's kind of to be expected. But it is a bit of a shame, especially given how big and lovely this screen is and how you're probably going to want to watch some movies on this. 
Let's talk about battery life, the Ultra sticks with the same 5000 mAh cell, which is absolutely fine, and not really surprising given the constraints of having to leave room for the spin inside. And I would be surprised if the S20 Ultra didn't last a little bit longer than before, thanks to the more efficient screen in the 8 Gen 2 chip. But I'll test this properly in my full review. Another year goes by and there is still no change to charging. The S23 supports 25 watts and the Plus and the Ultra up to 45 watts. Although of course we do get wireless charging and reverse, which is nice, but I would like to see a bit of an upgrade in terms of charging speed. However, where the S20 Ultra is definitely not lagging behind is in terms of performance and the camera LPDR5X RAM, either 8 or 12 gigs of the stuff, plus the faster UFS for storage with 256 and 512 gig and 1 TB options. Now, I haven't had a chance to benchmark this just yet, and I don't know why I'm holding that because it's the old one. But with my experience of other 8 Gen 2 powered phones, I can tell you it is actually a significant upgrade in terms of performance, energy efficiency, battery has been better so far, and also the camera. You can expect to max out gently impact and never drop below 60, although at this level it becomes more about sustained performance. The only surprise is that the new chip supports Wi-Fi 7, but the new phones don't. Samsung's disabled it, or at least for now, possibly we'll see it on the new Galaxy Fold 5 later in the year. And to be fair, there are only a handful of 7 routers out there anyway, so it's really on the sort of cutting edge of tech. And finally, let's talk about this camera because this is what I'm most excited about with the Ultra. And while on the outside it's a familiar quad lens setup with the main ultra wide and there's two telephoto cameras for some hilarious and slightly creepy results at up to 100 times zoom. But what is different this year is the main camera has a new 200 megapixel resolution. Clearly 108 megapixels last year was just not enough. And now with Pixel binning, which combines 16 pixels into one, we end up with a sharper and less noisy 12 megapixel file photo. But yes, you can shoot in the full resolution if you really want to, but I wouldn't recommend it as you'll miss out on a lot of the processing. I also really appreciate we get for years of Android updates with Samsung phones and of course the S23 runs the latest One UI. 5.1 on top of Android 13, which introduces a couple of new mode and routine options which I'll play with, but there's nothing significantly new here. No complaints though mid-store fast there's an absolute ton of features from the sidebar to windows, link to decks, to all the spin extras. So all that sounds very exciting, but the S23 Ultra is very expensive as you'd expect. And actually, while the price hasn't technically gone up, because they phased out the entry-level 128GB version. And now you have to start at 256, which I think actually is the spec it wants, and also comes with 12 gigs of RAM as standard and is now more expensive starting at £1249, although here in the UK, at least for the same storage, that's actually £60 cheaper than the iPhone 14 Pro maximum. But don't forget, there is a lot of strong competition out there. You've got the regular S Plus may actually end up being the best choice. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below. If you've got any questions for my full review and big comparisons, which are coming very soon. Also, let me know, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.